welcome to MSP lecture series on uh, main group elements. Let me begin today's lecture with uh, uh, group 2 element hydrides. Let me start the discussion on the hydrides of group 2 elements. All the group 2 elements form saline hydrides that is ionic hydrides with the exception of beryllium and in fact which forms a polymeric covalent compound. It forms a one dimensional uh, polymeric beryllium hydride chain and beryllium form ionic saline hydrides that contain H minus ion. They can be prepared by direct reaction between the metal and hydrogen. So, beryllium hydride is a covalent and must be prepared from alkyl beryllium. So, because of its covalent nature, it is very difficult to prepare starting from beryllium and hydrogen uh, gas. In fact, it can be conveniently prepared in its purest form starting from alkyl beryllium that uh, method I will show you later. So, for example, uh, the stable beryllium hydride can be prepared by pyrolysis of uh, bis tertiobutyl beryllium and I would tell you later how to make that one. So, in order to prepare beryllium hydride, uh, one should use uh, this organometallic compound such as bis tertiobutyl beryllium. And of course, one can also prepare starting from beryllium chloride treating that one with a reducing agent such as lithium aluminum hydride. So, beryllium chloride on treatment with lithium aluminum hydride, it gives plus LiCl plus AlCl3 or they should be conveniently written as AlCl4. Okay. So, here uh, one should remember when you are making these hydrides, they are extremely reactive and react readily with water. As a result, these reactions has to be carried out in non-aqueous medium and in dry organic solvents reaction has to be carried out and the incorporation of moisture and oxygen should be excluded at all stages. Okay. So, let me show you how to prepare this. Uh, uh, ditertiobutyl beryllium uh, BeCl2 should be treated with the Grignard reagent it forms plus 2 MgCl2 okay and this one on decomposition gives BH2 plus CH2. So, this is nothing but So, uh, beryllium hydride structure is very similar to H structure is very similar to BeCl2. In fact, uh, in both the cases beryllium species whether it is beryllium hydride or beryllium chloride act as Lewis acid as well as Lewis base. As a result what happens they form adducts having this uh, bridges BeHe, BeH. BE bridge and they form the association to form one dimensional chain like this. So, it goes like this similar structure one can uh, show for beryllium 
chloride as well in solid state. <coughs> so, now uh, let us look into uh, the decomposition of ditertiary beryllium. So, how it is giving uh, beryllium hydride. So, here we should talk about the kinetic pathway that is available for the decomposition of uh, you know alkyl beryllium to give beryllium hydride. So, this pathway that is used for the decomposition of alkyl beryllium or in general organometallic compounds is called beta hydrogen elimination and here it is although uh, beryllium to carbon bond is quite stable compared to any other bonds having the energy very similar to nitrogen carbon or phosphorus carbon. Uh, here uh, because of free coordinate sites that are available on the metal, okay. so this beta hydrogen elimination takes place and here uh, I will show you how that happens using a general method of for beta hydrogen elimination. Let us have a molecule like this, let us assume we have one CH2, CH3 group here and this I would preferably write in this fashion. So, now basically what happens? So, this comes very close to uh, and it forms a, a four member intermediate of this type. So, here of course, I, uh, I can also show this one, this moves here and this will come here. As a result, what we get is So, so all okay, and preferably I can call it as this one as uh, intermediate and then this one leads to the formation of M2 hydrogen metal to hydrogen bond and hence here uh, we get a, a unsaturated species. Okay. And then here uh, uh, coordination number increases by coordination number will be n plus 2 increases by 2 okay. and then eventually uh, this gives rise to okay. so, and of course, later this can also decompose. Okay. So, this uh, kind of beta hydrogen elimination makes the organometallic compounds unstable and here uh, most of the compounds if they are coordinatively unsaturated, there is a scope for the increase of the coordination bar by 2. As a result, uh, this kind of rearrangement takes place and that results in the elimination of one of the hydrogen and eventually this compound decomposes. Of course, this method is exploited in the formation of a beryllium hydride here. So, in case of beryllium hydride, first let me write one group here intact and then let me write here a tertiary butyl group like this. So, in the same fashion you can write here. Okay. So, this eventually leads to the formation of mono beryllium hydride species and if I repeat this again this eventually gives to beryllium hydride. So, this is how beryllium hydride in its pure form can be prepared starting from ditertiary beryllium. And these reactions can also be reversible. This is where the utility of uh, this type of compounds comes in hydrogenation reactions. 
For example, I will also write uh, for your uh, information. Tritashibutyl phosphine uh, copper complex with uh, uh, labeled organic moiety. So, beta hydrogens are replaced by deuterium. Okay, so, here the product is T D and of course, this can be verified from 1 H NMR spectrum. So, here this beta is labeled so that means, we have replaced hydrogen with deuterium as a result one can expect the formation of uh, deuteride uh, instead of uh, hydride CUH and this can be verified by NMR and also through the formation of this one by analyzing the uh, compound that is uh, coming as a byproduct, one can confirm that the reaction that is responsible is beta hydrogen elimination. And as I said, this can also be reversible, one can also make uh, beta elimination reversible. Okay. I will show you one example here. Let us consider this cyclopentadienyl dimer, uh, bis cyclopentadienyl niobium uh, having a C2H4 group ethylene as well as an ethyl group. Okay. This cyclopentadienyl niobium ethylene ethyl compound, this one on heating it loses C2H4 to form Cp2NB C2H4 and H that means hydride bond. And of course, on addition of uh, ethylene, one can regenerate the ethyl and ethylene complex. So, this shows that uh, these reactions can be made reversible. Of course, some of these reactions come very handy in catalytic uh, organic transformations. So, this is how uh, beryllium hydride structure looks like. You can see here uh, we have four bond. Uh, I can one can also explain this one using uh, valence bond theory using hybridization concept. Let me do that one. For example, in case of beryllium, what we have is uh, two s two electronic configuration, and of course two p orbital is empty. So prior to the formation of hydride, what it does is it promotes one of the electron to the p. That means now we have a situation like this. And, and now, these S and 3P orbitals will combine to form 4 sp3. And out of uh, 4 sp3, we have 2 sp3 with 1 electron each and other 2 with 0 electrons. So, now they orient in this fashion. So, we have one electron here, one electron here, no electron here. Now, H comes here, H with one electron uh, and then H with another electron here. So, we have a situation like this now. So, here we have uh, two covalent bonds are formed here okay, uh, because this hydrogen is giving one electron from its 1s1, 1s1 and here 1 s 1. So, and now these two are empty. Now, we have a situation like this. It can be written like this. And here still we have empty ones, empty s p 3 orbitals. So, another beryllium atoms comes here. And another beryllium atoms comes here. So, it can continue in this way what happens now this is empty and we have two electrons are there. Now, interaction takes place here. So, that essentially results in So, 
so it goes. So, this is how uh, one can explain the polymeric chain that is formed in beryllium hydride uh, to overcome electron deficiency. And if you consider here, now this bond acts as a Lewis base, it gives electron whether this bond, this one acts as a Lewis acid. So, that means each beryllium essentially acts as a Lewis base as well as a Lewis acid and hence you see the formation of products in which we have this three centered two electron bonds are formed. Okay. So, they find a method of uh, okay, overcoming the coordinating unsaturation through this okay, unsaturated electronically unsaturated three centered bonds. This is what exactly happens in case of uh, dibor and B2H6 also. Of course, I will be elaborating more when I look into the chemistry of group 13 elements. So, the ionic hydrates of the heavier elements react violently with water to produce hydrogen. For example, let us consider magnesium hydride. If I treat this one with water, it forms readily magnesium hydroxide plus H2 is liberated. Okay. So, as this reaction is not violent as that for the group 1 elements can be used as a source of hydrogen in fuel cell. That means, although they react violently, the violence is considerably less compared to the group 1 element hydrates reaction with water. So, since these reactions are not so violent, one can think of using magnesium or alkali metal hydrates as source of hydrogen in fuel cells. And for hydrogen storage, a reversible reaction involving uptake of hydrogen near room temperature is needed. So, that means essentially one should look for this kind of property. This reaction should be reversible. Yeah, if you achieve reversibility, then this alkali metal hydrates can be used as source of hydrogen in fuel cells. So, group 2 elements react with oxygen to form oxides. Now, let us me look into the oxides of group 2 elements. Group 2 elements react with oxygen to form oxides. All the elements except beryllium also form unstable peroxides. The oxides of magnesium to radium react with water to form basic hydroxides very similar to alkali metal oxides and beryllium oxide and beryllium hydroxide are essentially amphoteric in nature and beryllium oxide is obtained by ignition of the metal in oxygen. It is a white insoluble solid, insoluble solid with melting point. 2570 degree centigrade okay. and is insoluble solid. The oxides of other group 2 elements can be obtained by direct combination of elements, uh, but they are more commonly obtained by decomposition of the carbonates. That means, on heating carbonates, they give the corresponding oxides along with the liberation of CO2 gas. So, this is the general and convenient method used for the preparation of oxides except in the case of beryllium. Simply by taking the carbonate and heating will lead to the formation of oxide through the liberation of carbon dioxide. So, that means when it comes to the structure, uh, all oxides from magnesium to barium adopt rock salt structure or sodium chloride structure their melting point decrease down the group as the lattice enthalpy decreases with increasing cation radius because of mismatch what happened the lattice energy decreases as a result melting point decreases down the group and calcium oxide also known as lime or quick lime is used in large quantities in the steel industries to remove phosphorus, silicon and sulfur impurities. Of course, uh, I will be discussing more about their uses later. When heated, calcium oxide is thermoluminescent and emits a bright white light, hence is called lime light. Of course, melting points I have shown here in this slide, you can see the trends. Melting point is uh, a little higher in case of magnesium oxide and, and steadily decreases down the group. And 
you can see here I have given the lattice energy and the melting point. So, they, they complement each other. Uh, beryllium oxide with very high lattice energy of 4298 shows highest melting point and as the lattice energy decreases uh, one can expect the decrease in the melting point as well. So, those trends are very clear and that can be seen from this table here and barium oxide with uh, lattice energy of 3034 kilojoules per mole shows lowest melting point among alkaline earth uh, metals with 1475 degree centigrade as its melting point. And sulphides of uh, group 2 elements also adopt rock salt structure and have application as uh, phosphorus. Okay. Beryllium sulphide adopts zinc blend structure that is zinc sulphide structure and sulphides of heavier elements all crystallize with uh, rock salt structure and barium sulphide produced by reducing the naturally occurring barytes that is BASO4 with coke. For example, one can reduce conveniently uh, BASO4 into uh, BAS by simply treating with coke. Now, let us look into the hydroxides of group 2 elements. Again, the solubility of hydroxides increases down the group. All the hydroxides are formed by reaction of the oxides with water. Here, there should not be any confusion. Uh, hydration enthalpy decreases down the group, but the solubility of the hydroxides increases down the group. All the hydroxides are formed by reaction of the oxides with water. Uh, you take any of this uh, uh, alkaline earth metal oxides and treat with water, the corresponding hydroxide will be formed and beryllium hydroxide is amphoteric in nature. The hydroxides become apparently more basic down the group because of their solubility increases from magnesium hydroxide to barium hydroxide. A saturated solution of calcium hydroxide is called lime water and used in testing the presence of CO2 that means it readily reacts with CO2. Barium hydroxide is soluble and aqueous solutions are described as strongly basic that means barium hydroxide uh, is quite strong base. As I said if carbon dioxide is bubbled through the lime water a white precipitate of calcium carbonate is formed okay, which then disappears on further reaction with carbon dioxide to form hydrogen carbonates. You take calcium hydroxide in aqueous medium, treat this one bubble carbon dioxide, it forms calcium carbonate plus H2O comes out. Okay. Similarly, if calcium carbonate is taken and treated with uh, CO2, in presence of water, So, this leads to the formation of hydrogen carbonate. So, simple anhydrous compounds of beryllium are covalent in nature. When crystallized from water, a salt containing tetra aqua beryllium cation is formed. Okay, for example, So, this is essentially due to the large hydration enthalpy of uh, beryllium compared to other group 2 elements. And this beryllium tetra aqua beryllium cation is very similar to the aluminum complex. Of course, aluminum forms hexa aqua. Uh, compound. Okay. And 
so similar to this hexa aqua aluminum 3 plus this tetra aqua beryllium is acidic as a result of the high polarizing power of the small beryllium 2 plus ion of course here we have the small 3 plus ion which results in hydrolysis the other hydrated group 2 cations are not acidic owing to their low charge to size ratio or charge density okay so that means except beryllium other uh, alkali metal compounds do not show amphoteric properties so this acidic property of hexa aqua can be shown from this uh, reaction also for example uh, this hexa aqua compound when it is treated with uh, water formed here. So, that means this indicates this reaction indicates that uh, tetra aqua beryllium 2 plus only exists in strong acid solution on increasing the pH hydroxide bridged ions such as okay, before the precipitation of BeOH twice. Okay, so, that means uh, on increasing the pH uh, beryllium hydroxide is formed prior to the precipitation of beryllium hydroxide this species is formed. So, in excess hydroxide BeO and BHO2 uh, will be formed. So, in excess uh, hydroxide OH minus. So, both BeO and BeOH twice dissolve to give beryllate uh, ion that is again comes back to hexa aqua beryllate ion demonstrating the amphoteric nature of beryllium. So, if you are curious to know the structure of this one this has a cyclic structure let me write the structure before I conclude this talk. It has a six membered cyclic structure with alternate beryllium and uh, oxygen atoms. So, this is the structure of the cyclic beryllium hydroxide uh, anion. So, let me stop here in my next lecture I will be discussing more about uh, uh, reactions of uh, hydroxides and then the chemistry of uh, alkali metals with respect to their interaction with halogens and other species. So, thank you very much. <laughs>